I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. I don't give everything. This is Black Widow, a.k.a. Natasha Romanoff, the formerly brainwashed Russian super spy turned Avenger in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <sighs> Because of Natasha's dark backstory and origin in the comic books, she was often a supporting character and not the star. But thanks to Scarlett Johansson's portrayal of the character over the past 10 years, Black Widow is finally ready to strike on her own. Created in 1964 by Stan Lee, Don Rico, and Don Heck, Black Widow first appeared as a Russian spy antagonist in Tales of Suspense issue number 52 featuring Iron Man. But this gorgeous new menace actually looked a lot different from the Black Widow we're all familiar with. She looked like a sassy dame ready for a night out on the town. Slowly but surely, her look evolved into something more appropriate for combat and sleuthing after Amazing Spider-Man issue number 86 in 1970. Some fans actually theorize that the inspiration for this design came from another Avenger, Emma Peel of the British Avengers TV series. Natasha defected to the US thanks to a short-lived romance with Hawkeye and would go on to work with the US government, S.H.I.E.L.D., and the Avengers. She teamed up with them on and off throughout the following decades, as well as other heroes like Daredevil and Spider-Man. I got rid of my ledger. I'd like to wipe it out. But how did Natasha Romanoff become this deadly femme fatale? Details of her origin in comics are a little scattered and conflicting at times. However, the main consistent plot points are that she was born in the Soviet Union as Natalia Alianova Romanova, sometime around World War II, orphaned, adopted by Ivan Petrovich, and eventually handed over to the USSR's Black Widow Ops program, aka the Red Room. It's there that she was trained to be a deadly lethal spy, brainwashed into being the perfect killer, and forcibly given de-aging formula. But the Red Room isn't all that bad. They do offer ballerina classes. Even after becoming a key member in the Marvel comic book world, she didn't really appear in other media. She popped up briefly in the 1966 cartoon The Marvel Superheroes, as well as the 2006 direct-to-video Ultimate Avengers movies. In 2004, the idea of a Black Widow film began floating around with X-Men and X2 scriptwriter David Hayter attached. Ultimately, though, that project was abandoned. However, things drastically changed for Black Widow in 2010, all thanks to Scarlett Johansson's scene-stealing, ass-kicking performance in Iron Man 2. <laughs> She would go on to leg scissor, shock, and borderline cripple an untold amount of bad guys in a combined eight films. She basically became the MVP of the MCU, teaming up with Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, even the Hulk. She would go on to help save the world and the universe without the assistance of superhuman strength, cutting edge technology, or godlike powers. She was just damn good at her job. Scarlett Johansson's versatility allowed her to portray Black Widow as someone who could take charge in any dangerous situation as well as show vulnerability as a character haunted by her past. This family, and I was, I was better because of it. And now, finally, Black Widow is front and center in her own movie. Taking place between the events of Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War, audiences will get the chance to explore Natasha's backstory as she teams up with Red Guardian and another Black Widow, Yelena Belova, to go head-to-head -head with Taskmaster and the horrors of the Red Room. Beyond that, the future of Black Widow is cloaked in mystery for the time being because, spoiler alert, she did die in Avengers Endgame. But regardless of her past or her future, the Avengers and all of the MCU wouldn't be the same without her.